So let's start the important topic that is a folds of peritoneum. There are a lot of questions from here. We used to ask the folds of peritoneum. So you remember, first of all, the important fold here. One is our lesser omenda. Then we have the greater omenda. See, lesser omenda, what does it mean? Omentum means like a bag like structure, right? So lesser omentum, what they do? They connect lesser curvature of stomach, lesser curvature of stomach to first part of duodenum, small intestine and they ends in the liver, in the porta hepatis part. The ends in the liver porta hepatis. Now in lesser momentum, they used to have there are some contents there. I remember a mnemonics A D U. What are the contents inside lesser momentum? A D U. Right? So A means here we have the hepatic artery. D means the bile duct. And me, V means portal vein. So in, inside the lesser omentum we have the hepatic artery, bile duct and the portal vein. So that's all you have to remember about lesser omentum. That is the first main fold in, inside the peritoneum. The next one is greater omentum. You can see they just they hang out from stomach, hangs out from stomach and they go till transverse colon to the large intestine. So it is like a like a hanging structure. See, it's all, all around in the abdomen. So if there is any infection in the abdomen, imagine there is a bacteria coming or any other back or any other infection coming, they will prevent spreading of this infection throughout the abdomen. So that is done by the greater omenda. So they will prevent the infection from bacteria that is spreading around. Okay, that's why greater amendment is also called policeman of abdomen. We know policeman of body is WBC. This is called what? Policeman of abdomen. So greater amendment is also called policeman of abdomen. So we have lesser amendment, greater amendment. Now this lesser amendment and greater amendment, they divides our peritoneal cavity into two sac. You can see here lesser sac and greater sac. See this lesser sac is also called omandal bursa. It is also called omandal bursa. Lesser sac is also called omandal bursa. That is in the posterior wall of stomach. See greater sac and lesser sac they are connected by a foramen so it must be the connection. That is called Epiploid foramen is also called foramen of Winslow. Foramen of Winslow. So what is the function? They connect lesser sac and greater sac. They connect in between. So connection is done by this foramen. Lesser and greater sac is done by foramen of Winslow. It is also called epiploid foramen. It is also called lesser sac is also called omandal bursa. So both are connected by epiploid foramen or foramen of Winslow. Now they used to ask the boundaries of this foramen, epiploic foramen or foramen of Winslow. So remember we have anterior boundary. So I am adding here, so boundary will be here, see, boundaries of epiploic foramen or foramen of Winslow. So remember anterior boundary, it is formed by saying the hepatic artery, bile duct and portal vein. In the lesser amount contents, hepatic artery bile duct and the portal vein. That will form the anterior boundary. Then we have posterior. <coughs> posterior is by inferior venae cava. I am raising here. Posterior inferior venae cava. Superior is by chordate lobe of liver. Remember chordate lobe of liver. So in many MCQ they used to ask foramen of Winslow, their boundaries. So remember anterior is by hepatic uh, artery and 
by left and portal way posterior by inferior vena cava you can imagine inferior vena cava will be here and superior is by the uh, the liver is having two lobes right caudate and caudate so it is by caudate caudate lobe of liver and the last boundary one more that is inferior inferior will be what is the organ here inferior will be duodenum but they will give you in the option other part of duodenum you have to remember it is a first part of duodenum pass superior first part of duodenum they will form the inferior boundary of liver so very important once again i am talking about foramen of pinslow epipoic foramen they connect lesser sac and greater sac their anterior boundaries by hepatic artery bile duct and portal vein posterior boundaries by inferior vena cava superior is by caudate lobe of liver and inferior is by first part of duodenum okay so they connect both lesser and greater sac so first fold in the peritoneum was lesser omentum second was greater omentum and they divide the peritoneal cava into two now we have something called mesentery the next fold is called mesentery <coughs> see mesentery they connect third fold i'm adding here next fold is mesentery see mesentery what they do is they suspends mesentery suspends small intestine to small intestine to posterior abdominal wall posterior abdominal wall and one more fold very important that is called mesocolon what they do is mesentery suspends small intestine mesocolon suspends large intestine suspends large intestine to posterior abdominal wall posterior abdominal wall so mesentery suspends small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall and the mesocolon suspends large intestine to the posterior abdominal wall now some more things i am adding here see in females it's not related to peritoneum i am adding something in female in between the uterus if this is a uterus and if this is the rectum there is a pouch forming there that pouch is called utero rectine or recto uterine pouch in between rectum recto uterine pouch uterus is only for females i am talking about females that is also called douglas pouch douglas remember this now in males we don't have uterus so in males it be it is between the urinary bladder urinary bladder and rectum so that pouch is called vesico vesico rectal pouch so vesico rectal pouch is in present in males and recto uterine is in present in female it is also called douglas pouch remember okay now the important point here is see most dependent part of peritoneum there is an mcq the most dependent part of peritoneum in standing position if a person there is a one word mcq most dependent part of peritoneum in standing position so it is in, i am talking about standing position now that will be our this recto uterine pouch remember or that is in female and in males vesico uterine so if they ask you in standing position what is the most dependent part of peritoneum what is your answer douglas pouch or recto uterine pouch or in males what is it vesico uterine pouch now if they ask you not in standing position if they ask you in supine position if they change the question to supine what is the most dependent part of peritoneum in supine position so at that time there is a pouch in between liver and kidney that is called hepatorenal pouch hepatorenal it is also called morrison's pouch m o r i s o n s so if the question is 
What is the most dependent part of peritoneum in supine position? What is your answer? Hepatorenal pouch or is also called Morrison. They ask you what is the most dependent part of peritoneum in supine standing position? Your answer becomes recto uterine that is for female. Remember it is also called Douglas pouch and vesico sorry recto uterine for female and vesico rectal right vesico rectal for male. That's what I have written here. So this is a very important MCQ. So remember, lesser ramandam, greater ramandam, what is epiploid for amount, is also called for amount of inslow. So the greater and lesser second are connected by this and what are their boundaries, that is also important. This all are the question they used to ask from the peritoneum or the folds of peritoneum. Thank you.